in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed hallelujah Three levels of satanic influences, witchcraft through deception, manipulation and control, largely in the realm of your mind, and then complete possession, influencing your spirit, influencing your mind, and influencing your body. Now, having put down all of these things in our discussion, what then is deliverance? What is deliverance? Exodus chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8. What exactly is deliverance? And the Lord said, Exodus chapter 3 from verse 7 and 8. I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. Please read verse 8 with me. Ready? Read. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land unto a good land and a large unto a land flowing with milk and honey unto a place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites I am come down to deliver them take note to take them out and to bring them in to take them out and to bring them in scripture number two Colossians chapter 1 from verse 13 and 14 Colossians chapter 1 from verse 13 and 14 who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son verse 14 in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Recall that I've taught you here that there are two dimensions when it has to do with the dealings of God and man. Number one, there is the prophetic dimension, realities from God's standpoint. That every time God speaks, he speaks from a realm that is finished. And number two, there is the experiential manifestation of that which God intended happening in time. Two dimensions. When you read the Bible, you will see God establish certain things. For instance, none shall say in Zion, I am sick. For instance, we've been delivered. Not, we have been deli not there is deliverance going on. We are delivered. It is our assignment to make that which was spoken become manifest. Are we together now? You have to understand this. Write this down, please. What is deliverance? I was going through the notes that I made last time I was doing Mystery of Deliverance and I saw this definition. I worked on it a bit, but it's a powerful definition. Listen carefully. Generally speaking, the word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage danger and evil generally speaking the word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage danger and evil generally speaking this is just a general idea the word deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage from danger and from evil Deliverance also means salvation. Deliverance also means salvation. 
Generally speaking, deliverance connotes rescue or freedom from bondage, danger, evil. Let me define deliverance proper now. Deliverance, I wrote here, is the scriptural strategy. Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing. I will take it very slowly because I don't want you to miss anything here. As long as it is, obtain grace to write it. There is victory in that sentence. Are we together? Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ. Let me stop there so you write. Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer. Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ. The victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces. Come on. Over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer. Establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer. If we are together, say amen. amen. Now listen as I read it without breaking. You've been writing. I want you to hear now. Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially manifesting Establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and destiny of the believer. Write this down. Deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare. Please don't be tired of writing. Deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare. For the believer in Christ, deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it. Deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer in Christ is about establishing, underline establishing, and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it. 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 4. That means deliverance, and then it extends to spiritual warfare. For the believer in Christ, our idea of deliverance is not fighting for victory. It's engaging the systems that establish and manifest the victory that has been wrought in Christ. Do you understand this now? It's important to get this definition. It will mean the world as far as challenging and contending for that which Christ has given you is concerned. Because there are ideas about deliverance that connotes fighting Satan. So you are not sure whether you win. You just fight and watch as it happens. That is not scriptural. That will be an endless struggle in ignorance until you are defeated. For the believer, our idea of deliverance is engaging the systems and the forces of victory given to us in Christ to establish and manifest our victory in Christ over Satan, over demons, principalities, and powers. 2 Corinthians 2, 14. 2 Corinthians 2, 14, 1, 4. Do we have that? Now thanks be unto God. Let's read together. Now thanks be unto God, 
which caused us to triumph where in Christ not by our ability in Christ and make it manifest that's right the savor of this knowledge by us in every place now thanks be to God who causes us to triumph we triumph but there is one who causes us to triumph the Bible calls him Christ Jesus first Corinthians 15 57 first Corinthians 15 57 let's read together again ready one to read but thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ shout amen, amen. but thanks be to God which giveth us giveth us the victory so when it has to do with deliverance your concern is not fighting satan your concern is not fighting demons your concern is not fighting causes your concern is not fighting yokes are we together your concern is taking advantage of what we call the weapons of victory that have been given to you in christ we're going to deal with the weapons what are they because the Bible says to put the whole armor of God. But there are weapons of victory that have been given to us. Weapon number one, the power of the word. Weapon number two, the power of the blood. Weapon number three, the power of the name. Given to us. Palakatusiata. Hmm. The power of the word. We'll deal with, with that when we go into administering deliverance. The power of the word. The power of the blood. The power of the name. All of them are not doing the same thing. No. Deliverance is the scriptural strategy for experientially establishing the victory and authority of Jesus Christ over satan and demonic forces as it relates to the life and the destiny of the believer deliverance and by extension spiritual warfare for the believer is not is about establishing and manifesting victory rather than fighting for it we are not fighting for it we have it already but now our assignment is to know how to engage it to make it manifest the bible says right from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but jesus had to come physically and engage the tool of being a man walking in the earth walk dying shedding his blood going to hades resurrecting to make that which was finished become manifest today hallelujah are you learning now before we pray let me end tonight's discussion by teaching you something very powerful access points access points hmm. that means by what access points does Satan and demons get into the life of the believer or find a place in their minds, their bodies? Listen, by the privilege of God's grace, I have studied my Bible from cover to cover. And by the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of listening to people who really understand this subject. I have studied my Bible and I found out as complicated as Satan Causes, yokes, altars, foundations, ancestry, and all these ills are. There are only three access points that Satan has to man and even the believer. Are you ready now? I may not go into in depth of detail, we'll leave that one for next week because I want us to take the remaining time and pray for all the sessions. We have some time to pray 
because there are people who as you are hearing now god is granting you that light and you are seeing that the strength of satan is in my cooperating with him through ignorance through through deception he will roar like a lion and act as if he will eat you out when he does ask him why he did not enter Eve and adam immediately ask him why when the spirits left the madman they did not enter another man he should give you the explanation where did he keep his power that he could not simply pick any man just because you come from a village where there is that cause does not mean you can allow Satan to just manipulate you like that. Now listen carefully. You are about to learn something that is very, very powerful. Access points. Please write. Are you ready? There are three biblical access points. Number one, covenants. Aha, uh -huh. covenants. Write it down. The first access point that gives Satan legitimate access to the lives of men, sadly, including believers, covenants. Please just write it. Number two, ignorance ignorance number three disobedience these are the three biblical access points and the only access points that satan has if you ever find satan manipulating a life a destiny a region a family i don't care how long i don't care how great Believe me when I tell you, it is one or more or all of these access points. Number one, covenants. Number two, disobedience, ignorance. Number three, of the three, the most effective for Satan is covenants. Do you know why? Because covenants have a transgenerational implication. Covenants, ignorance, and disobedience are all interrelated. But covenants seem to be powerful because it is on legal basis. Let me touch on covenants. The idea of covenant was not invented by Satan. The idea of covenant was invented by God. It was God's own intelligence to manage the inconsistencies and to manage the emotional frailty of man. Listen carefully. God gave man a will and the fallen man by his design is frail with several emotional vacillations. And if man is going to partner with God sustainably, there has to be a way of binding man that is greater than his emotions. Covenants. Because covenant is a non-emotional activity. That means you can't just decide to change it. Anything God wants to do with man that he wants to take seriously, he will tie a covenant to it. My covenant will I not break, nor alter the thing that is gone forth from my lips. You know, believers play with the idea of covenants, and you will see that everything God takes seriously, marriage, he took it seriously, and he tied it to a covenant. Do you know why? Because he knows under normal circumstances, the couple can run away by the next day. So he put covenant, a non-emotional binding, so that it's not about what you feel or you don't feel. There is an influence that is higher than your emotional vacillations. Salvation is a covenant. Whosoever believes him, if not, there are people who can be so bad, they don't deserve to be saved. However, because it is a covenant, 
whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord it does not matter who that person is provided you confess with your heart let me tell you if you are given the keys for salvation there are people whose level of evil if you see them you will tell them don't near this altar however because it is a covenant whosoever believes in him even if you are Saul even if you are Paul whosoever the only personalities that salvation does not capture are fallen angels salvation is not for angels and non-human spirits I'll be teaching you the rules of engagement that is why Satan and demons cannot be forgiven mm -mm. salvation is for men salvation is for men the benefit of salvation extends to creation but animals don't have to give their life to Jesus they are already under the dominion of man the same way when Eve ate nothing happened till Adam ate that is the same way what animals and plants do does not matter provided the man in control is still in touch with God are you seeing that now animals and seas and all of this only are harsh to man because man had willfully given his authority to Satan I pray you're getting what I'm teaching you covenants are very powerful everything that God wants to do with you if he wants to take you seriously there will be covenants because by the frail nature of men that's why you hear that there are relationships called covenant relationships non-emotional is that true when you get a job watch this it may not be called covenant but there is something given to you called an employment letter is that true it clearly spells the terms you are going to be giving 500,000 every month they calculate it for you per annum you have 30 days one month leave you can spread it three or four times they give you all of those things and then you sign the signing is a declaration of your consent that if for any reason I violate these terms is that true the company has a right to punish me based on their modus operandi and that if I comply with these terms I have a right to take the company to court for defaulting covenants say covenants that is the reason why when Satan came to our forefathers he did not suggest he called them and said you want me to help you let us have an agreement now you see an altar is simply a system of authorization again we'll discuss that next week when we talk about altars an altar because you will see that what we call the mercy seat in heaven in fact God himself sits his throne is an altar a system of authorization let us therefore come before the throne of grace that we may obtain from that throne he literally sits on an altar an altar is a system of authorization the assignment of an altar is to insist that the terms of a covenant remain binding even when those who initiated it are no more an altar is the spiritual system that supervises compliance to covenants there is no true covenant until there is an altar and that altar is built and ratified with blood so that even though our forefathers have long gone even though those who brought all kinds of demonic things have long gone but the altars that represent the witness are still there so after 50 years 100 years the spirits have legitimate access to the people within that region and every time you want to accuse them they go back and make reference the altar remains a witness I am not an illegal occupant in this land I was willfully invited and your forefathers and you were in the loins of your forefathers that is the reason why the sacrament of the communion and the sacrament of baptisms these are covenant type things too how did you get into Christ it was by the mystery of that covenant drink this this is my blood of the new covenant do this as often as you can in remembrance of me 
are we together now watch this when the angel of death was going to pass over Egypt remember the condition for salvation was not your personal righteousness whether you are a Jew or not just find a house the house did not have emotions provided there is blood on the house whoever is in it you are saved but when you are in that house even though you are saved there will still be a difference if you wanted to become a Jew there you have to submit yourself to circumcision however as far as safety from the angel of death is concerned the angel does not see men he's looking for the blood you know why because the angel of death was mandated to kill everybody and like we say in theology when he came to some homes he found them already dead because the blood is a sign that the death that should happen has happened so the angel of death will pass as far as the angel of death is concerned he killed everybody it's only that when he came some people someone had helped him kill the ones in the house so he moves to the house where there is no blood and creates blood there listen that is the same way when a covenant has been ratified by blood an authorization is given that everybody who comes from this region this spirit when you see them have no fear through ancestry through bloodline or through their personal activities they have brought themselves to that point that is the reason why when you are dealing with issues of legal access you do not cast it in jesus name it is the blood that speaks there are rules of engagement look at me as powerful as god is he did not cast sin out of man you would think god would look at man and say i am god i am creator man be free no when he gave satan the authority it was willful and it would take the blood this is why a lot of believers just pray and say it is done and it is not done because they do not understand the power of the covenant that brought them that trouble go and read the history of many lands you will hear that they bury human beings they bury people alive do you know the power of blood and the power human beings were the zenith of God's creation and you will not just carelessly say I don't believe I force my mind to think right you are joking it takes the blood and you see in the realm of the spirit blood is currency and from the physical world you know that there is dollars there's naira there's pounds there's whatever it is I don't know how much one dollar is to naira now don't say it <laughs> hallelujah but one thing we know is that it's not one naira to one dollar are we together because the blood of Jesus speaketh better things every blood speaks something but with respect to what we want the only blood that can speak to the degree one million naira can pay for rent of a certain kind of house but you can look at a certain house and you know that as wonderful as one million is it can't go beyond it you will need something else the blood of abel the blood of bulls the blood of goats they could do something in the realm of the spirit but when jesus came listen please don't mix next next week as i teach you the power of the blood the blood is powerful everybody's blood including your own you will be learning that the blood is one of the weaknesses on earth do you know what that means there are three things that have lived as long as the earth one of it is water this water you are drinking you are not the first person to drink it because it recycles you don't know who else has taken it before it got to you that's why the Bible says water is a witness it has lived long on earth recycling itself and blood nobody invents his own blood it is past that means the blood in everybody is typically older than that person except you are denying biology 
Is that true? I'm not a doctor, but let's be intelligent for God's sake. It took that blood to bring you. So the blood cannot be as the same age with you. There are three witnesses in heaven. The spirit, the word, and the father, the spirit, and the word. And these three agree. And on earth, there are three witnesses. The spirit, the water, and the blood. Many of us have found ourselves in situations today. Listen to me, we're wrapping up. You have prayed and prayed and prayed and fasted. And as soon as you are done with the fasting, the same thing you prayed about happens casually. As if you were wasting your time in all that fasting. You were praying to stop some spirit that is coming to molest you. And just when you finish the last fast, that sleep you just took a little siesta and that spirit comes again to rubbish your fasting because there are rules of engagement there are people who will not listen to me the fact that you are not listening to me is a sign that there is an attack already that is a symptom of an attack listen i will always tell you i'm not just speaking from scripture alone I'm speaking from experience there are things in your life that will never grow there are things in your life that will never thrive until you understand the rules of engagement for everybody seated here under the sound of my voice listen to me who is trusting God for some kind of liberty for yourself for your children or for your family please hear me there are only three access points as complicated as your life may seem don't let the devil confuse you it looks like there are one million doorways it's a lie there are only three access points one covenants two ignorance three disobedience that's it so you know what to close to be free And ye shall know the truth when you know the truth when both the deceived and the deceiver know the truth deception dies the strength of deception is that the deceiver knows the truth and that's what he uses as an advantage when the ignorance of the deceived cooperates with the knowledge of the deceiver deception happens the cure it's not necessarily driving the deceiver alone but that the deceived must also come to the point of knowledge when you come to that point of knowledge now the deceiver does not have an advantage over you if a visitor comes to meet two of us or someone comes to meet you and your say your sibling and he gives 10, 10,000, and he says, give everybody. If you didn't hear it or you didn't know that there is a share for you there, the person can even give you 1,000 and you can kneel down. He can even say, go away. This was for me. Is that true? But if for any reason you find a way, when the person wants to solve that problem, he will come again. And he will say, let me repeat what I said. I said, this 10,000 is for everybody. When you hear it, that contention dies because immediately now you know the truth and based on the truth you know you can say my 10,000 no stories hand it over to me now in peace your boldness is based on the quality of the information and the persuasion that you have when you rebuke the devil and speak and then you go back and you are afraid and say ah did I talk too much oh God forgive me it's because you are not sure of something that generates the power and the courage listen I have held many charms with my bare hands I have prayed for many people this is what I do I have seen many spirits I have met many demon spirits 
I can tell you the strength of Satan is in his power to deceive the strength of Satan is in the continual ignorance of the saints the strength of Satan is in the inaccurate construction of our spiritual understanding for John 1 5 says the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not when you go to your village you may, most likely may see shrines you most likely may see a lot of demonic things around just toying it with ignorance will cause you casualties but when light comes I don't know how true it is but I hear is the story of Archbishop Benson Idahosa when I think someone dropped a dead chicken or something of that sort and they saw the chicken it was supposed to be a ritual for them to die and they carried the chicken and said we can't waste this chicken like this and they boiled it and ate it in peace and they went and slept and they woke up because you see before satan attacks he finds out what god told you and he finds out whether you know and believe what god told you the trouble is if you believe what god told you and you know how to make it happen and remain in your life now you have defeated him totally one last scripture and then we'll begin our prayer isaiah 49 Isaiah 49 let's start from verse that should be 24 Isaiah 49 24 shall the prey be taken from the mighty it's a question or the lawful captive you know who a lawful captive is a lawful captive is one who was bought from a slave master because those days they used to sell human beings just like chickens and so if I'm a slave and my slave master comes and exchange money with someone and they transfer me, I am still a slave. I am a lawful captive. Number two, if a king leads a delegation to go for war and they conquer the people and kill the king, all the people within that land become slaves. Is that true? They are called lawful captives. For instance, Israel in Egypt. They were lawful captives. That's why they could whip them to build those pyramids and all those Egyptian buildings. But he's saying, is there a possibility that when the mighty has taken a prey or the lawful captive, can he be delivered? Let the Lord answer it by himself. But thus saith the Lord, hmm. even the captive of the mighty shall be taken away and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered for i will contend with him that contended with thee and i will save your children there is a cure to demonic covenants there is a cure to yokes and spells and hexes and all of these things please hear me there is a cure hmm. when Jesus Christ hung on that cross it was not just the body of a 33 year old man hanging his blood was touching the earth that old earth that is one of the witnesses when he drained his blood and according to the revelation of Paul to the church in Hebrew, the Hebrew church when he went as a high priest and a lamb also he poured his blood once and for all and he returned back to the earth and said all hail he said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me listen john said i wept 
for no man that means men are doomed I wept for no man is worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll and the elder said weep not weep not oh crying comes to an end weep not weep not for behold the lion of the tribe of Judah the root of David has prevailed the word prevailed means qualified to open the book and lose the seven seals verse 6 and I beheld and in the midst of the throne were four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though he had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes the lamb that was slain now unto the lamb upon the throne we raise up we raise our For you are God and God alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now unto the Lamb upon the throne. We raise a sound. We raise a sound. For you are God and God alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, can I tell you this? The lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. Listen, listen. There are people today who under normal circumstances you should not rise. I don't know what my forefathers did. I don't know what they did. In, in dating, there is what we call A.D. and B.C. Is that true? The middle man was Jesus Christ. I may not know what happened before he came, but the good news is that he came. He came. He came. Please listen to me. Your destiny depends on what you are hearing. Remember everything I taught you today. Satan is not looking for your money. He's not looking for your fruitfulness. He's not looking for your job. He's not looking for your health. He's looking for loyalty. Transgenerational loyalty. And that the structure of his operation largely is deception. He manipulates strategies that fights the word of God. The principal raw material for his fashioning his attack against you is the word of God. It's amazing that it's not only God and believers that use the word of God. Satan uses it too. It is his principal raw material. Hear me? You hear of young men going to go and do money ritual. You will never see Satan following them. Yet he's the one moving them. Deception. Listen, and when they go and do the money ritual, you will see that there are physical evidences. Money comes, so they will go and do it again. Because they don't know what else. Satan will never tell you the complete story. And he will never tell you the whole truth. He will doctor the truth to present it in a way that provides an advantage for him. When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. All truth. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray, pray, pray for your destiny. Salaskade Bashkanakata Branda Kate Kapos.
Tete Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. 